that division because a lot of them were well off and a lot of them were judges and a lot of them were politicians and they were respectable quote unquote so they would they would absolutely not support um, physical force right down and we had exactly the same thing going on in the 80s and 90s here in, here in America and it was very very divisive right here in this house there was like tremendous divisions people haven't spoke to each other for 20 30 years 20 25 years who were right here because of that so that split was there because one wanted to do it constitutionally and the other wanted to say no let's send money to the IRA and let's bomb London you know so anyway um, John Devoy was one of the old was one of the young Irelanders and he was the old man if you like of of uh, Irish politics, uh, Irish American politics, uh, edited and ran a newspaper in America. He um, was not a physical force guy. He um, abhorred the collecting of money to send it to the what they call the diamond, the dynamiters, because they were starting to throw bombs and um, uh, dynamite um, civilian. Uh, civilians in, 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 in England, and it was causing a huge uh, backlash and so on. So as soon as you start throwing bombs or firing bullets, uh, you know, you, somebody, there's going to be collateral damage. And when you read the paper the following morning, it's not going to look pretty. So, and often it can be very counterproductive uh, politically. But on the other hand, the argument then is, well, if we don't, we're never going to get anywhere because, look, they don't even listen to us. You know, so it's a very, very tough, um, tough question, and I'm not trying to resolve it. I'm just saying how much it, it's, it's influenced and defined, if you like, the, the, the various movements. Now, the the um, English tended to put us all together into one big, um, what club, and they called us Fenians, because there was part part of the m movement that called themselves Nafiana after the old uh, mythological, um, well, I'm sure it's historical, but mythological in the sense that we don't, um, Irish um, warrior class, kind of like the, um, what do you call it, the Jap Japanese, the um, samurai. samurai, you know, sort of thing. So they call this, they, they, they call the, the, uh, the, the Irish, um, and that has, that has survived down to this day, where the word Fenian bastard is, is, is bandied about, in, especially in Belfast, and some will, will wear it very proudly say, I'm a Fenian bastard, you know. So uh, Fenianism uh, became the word for the entire independence movement and didn't distinguish very much between those who were constitutionally minor or not. One party was very clearly constitutional, and that was the Irish party in the, in the British House of Commons under Parnell. And they succeeded in a great, to a great degree apparently only then to literally achieve nothing at all um, because everything they achieved was taken from them and um, it's very interesting reading and this is this is for whoever watches the video Maud Gan actually believed that the British Secret Service murdered Parnell and uh, now she came from and was associated with the physical force element of the Irish independence movement in the latter half of the 1900s and the early part of the, of the 1900s. Um, so therefore she was probably not the only one that thought that. And there's a great deal of um, logic attached because he died in his prime and he, he got a cold and died so to speak. You know, he, you know, why did he die? I've, I've often wondered about that. And But then again, you know, we're all great cons conspir conspiracy theorists. Um, but one of the things, his best friends were not allowed to see his body two, three hours after he died. So there was no autopsy, there was no way. So, uh, so therefore, you can see how that kind of beliefs and various other things fed into the, look, I told you, we wasted decades messing around with constitutional politics. We have to start drilling our, our people and forming our, our little army and so on. Um, and the Irish Parliamentary Party and the, uh, the constitutional movement kept the lid on that all throughout the 1890s and indeed 
most of the, the first decade of the 1900s. It wasn't really until 1916 that it actually exploded. So that you could say certainly that the, um, the Irish parliamentary movement um, really did keep the cap on the, the, for, for those two decades, um, including in America. And I'm getting the, the tea sign. But I'm leading into probably the second half, which we'll, 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 because uh, that is a watershed where um, uh, it did explode with a vengeance in 1916 and the, and, and the, the logic behind it. So we'll, we'll, we'll be back again after a tea break. <laughs>